So in our previous lesson, we talked about pull up and pull down resistors. Here I have the same circuit with the button and the LED. I have deleted the external pull up resistor and I have enabled the internal pull up resistor on pin four. And again, when I run this simulation, when I click and hold the button down, the LED turns on. Now, what we ignored in the previous lesson is the code inside this while loop, which you can probably start to decipher if you look at it. You can see we have an if statement with some condition that we'll explain in a little bit. And then inside that if else statement, we are writing to the port D register to either turn the LED on or off. So the mystery and the new code that we're going to explain in this video is what exactly is going on inside the condition for this if statement. So inside this if statement, we have pin D, a bitwise AND operator, and then a binary number. And pin D is a new register we haven't encountered yet that reads the value of a pin. So previously we've seen the DDR or data direction register that sets a pin as an input or an output, the port register, which if a pin is an output, sets it high or low. If a pin is an input, it turns the internal pull-up resistor on and off. The pin register, just like these two registers, has bits that correspond to physical pins on the Arduino. So the pin D register is going to correspond to Arduino pins zero through seven. And the values of this register are going to read whether each individual pin is high or low, and it will do this whether or not the pin is set as an output. So if I set a pin as an output, for example, I set pin seven as an output and set it high, bit seven of pin D will then become a one. Or if I have a pin set as an input, depending on whether or not I click my button, the corresponding bit in pin D will read zero if the voltage is low and one if the voltage on that input pin is high. Now, in this if statement, I only care about bit 4 in pin D because that corresponds to pin 4 on the Arduino where my button is connected. That is why I have this bitwise AND operator with the binary 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So there is a 1 in the fourth bit there. Remember, you have to start counting at 0 on the right and count right to left. Now, a lot of students will see that and ask, why are you using a bitwise AND operator? Why don't you use the equals operator to confirm that pin D equals exactly this and you have a one there. And the answer is that you don't know what's going on with the other bits. So imagine if you had a program with multiple buttons and those buttons were controlling different things and you just wanted to get the value of this bit for this button. If I had another button with a value of one and I was using an equals operator here, then this code wouldn't work. You also have to remember that the pin register will also record the values of output pins. So if you had other LEDs that were turned on and their values were set to one, that would also show up in the pin register. So the equal sign here won't work. What we need is the bitwise AND operator, which allows us to only check the value of that fourth bit. We're gonna switch over to PowerPoint to explain how that works. So we have the pin D register, which is reading the value of all eight bits on port D. And we only care about bit four, and we have no idea what the other bit values are. So we're just gonna call bit four X, which could be zero or one, and we're not gonna assign variables to the other ones. We just have no idea what they are. We only wanna find out if X is one or zero. So we can take the value stored in the pin D register and using what we remember about masking, we can do a bitwise AND operator with this binary value. Now remember, if you do a bitwise AND with zero, it's going to change that bit to zero no matter what. So it doesn't matter what this bit is, whether it's zero or one, if I AND it with zero, it's going to become zero. If you do a bitwise AND with one, it's going to keep the value of that bit. So whether X is zero or one, I do a bitwise AND with one, I'm still going to get X down here. So the result of that operation is going to be a new binary number where now I know all of the bits except X. So all of these other bits are going to be set to zero and I will still be left with X in the fourth bit. Now, based on how C evaluates Boolean values, I know that if X is one, this is going to be some non-zero integer, which C will evaluate as true. So C evaluates anything that isn't zero as true. And if X is zero, 
this whole number is going to be zero and C will evaluate it as false. So this now gives me a condition that I can evaluate as true or false based on the value of X alone, independent of the values of the other bits in the register. So knowing that, let's go back to now take a complete look at the code. I have my setup code where I use the data direction register to set pin seven as an output and pin four as an input. I use the port D register to enable the internal pull-up resistor on pin four, so I do not need an external pull-up resistor. Then I enter my infinite while loop where I have an if else statement. The condition in the if statement uses the bitwise and operator to check if bit four is a high. So here's where you have to think about how that relates to how your button is physically wired. Remember, I have a pull-up resistor enabled on this button. So by default, when the button is not pushed, that is going to pull the voltage on this input pin high. When I push the button, it's going to short that to ground, so the voltage is going to go low. So this condition will evaluate to true when this bit is high when the button is not pushed. So in my if statement then, when this is true, I want to turn the LED off because I only want the LED on when I push the button. When I push the button, that is going to pull this pin low. I will enter the else part of the if else statement and I will use the port register to turn the LED on. So what we've done here is called polling, where we are continuously looping and constantly checking this input, which can become a problem for longer and more complicated programs. So in our next lesson, we will introduce something called interrupts that will allow us to get around that problem. Your assignment for this lesson is to copy this circuit and this code, and then add a second LED and a second button to the port D register, so with everything on port D, you'll have to be careful to properly use masking and avoid inadvertently overwriting the wrong LED or reading the wrong button, and give them the reverse behavior. So the LED should be on by default and turn off when you push the button. 